February 9, 1945, North Sea, 80 meters depth. Commander Ralph Reimar Wolfram stood in U-864's control room when his hydrophone operator reported something impossible. Herr Kaleo, submerged contact, bearing 270, range, uncertain, Wolfram froze. A submerged contact meant one thing, another submarine. But submarines don't hunt submarines, not underwater, not without seeing the target. It's tactically impossible. Wolfram ordered, silent running, rig for depth charge. But 800 meters behind him, British commander James Launders, aboard HMS Venturer, wasn't using depth charges. He was using mathematics. And for the past three hours, he'd been tracking U-864, using only sound. February 4th, 1945, Bletchley Park, England. British cryptographers had done something the Germans thought impossible. They broke the Enigma naval cipher. Not just once, continuously. Every message, every day. They called it ultra-intelligence. And on February 4th, a decoded intercept revealed everything. U-864, Type 9, D-2 submarine. Departed Kiel, January 5th. Destination, Japan. Transit time, four months. Cargo, 67 tons of liquid mercury for atomic bomb detonators. Two German engineers. Jet engine blueprints. Mission code name, Operation Caesar. And critically, critically, the intercept noted one detail. Diesel engine number two. Defective. Excessive vibration. Acoustic signature detectable at eight plus miles. The Kriegsmarine knew about the defect. They sent U-864 anyway. February 5th, 1945. HMS Venturer received orders. Intercept U-864. Estimated position North Sea Corridor off Norway. Intercept and destroy. Cargo must not reach Japan. Commander James Launders, age 25. First command, three years submarine combat experience. Studied the ultra-intelligence. U-864's defective diesel. The acoustic signature pattern the eight-day transit window, and Launders made a calculation. If I position Venturer here, and wait, and use only hydrophones, I can attack a submerged target without ever seeing it. It would require perfect acoustic tracking, perfect mathematics, perfect prediction of enemy behavior. It would require defeating psychology with geometry. Launders ordered, dive to 40 meters, silent approach, hydrophone watch continuous. HMS Venturer submerged and waited. February 9th, 1945, 0712 hours. Venturer's hydrophone operator pressed his headset tight against his ears. Contact, sir. Bearing 095, diesel signature, irregular rhythm, excessive vibration on starboard engine, range, eight miles, maybe more. Launders checked the chart. U-864's projected route from Kiel to Japan passed through this exact corridor. Confirm signature pattern, Launders ordered. The operator listened. The sound was distinctive, defective, matching Ultra's description perfectly. Launders smiled grimly. That's our target. Plot intercept course. Maintain depth 40 meters. Silent approach. What Wolfram didn't know, his submarine was broadcasting its location like a radio beacon. Every revolution of that damaged diesel created an acoustic signature detectable at 8 miles. And Launders had been trained to recognize it. 8.30 hours. Range, 4 miles. Launders stood at the attack periscope, but he didn't raise it. Raising the periscope would create a visible wake. U-864's lookouts would spot it. The element of surprise would vanish. So Launders tracked U-864 using only sound. His hydrophone operator called out bearings every 30 seconds. Bearing 092, 091, 090. Launders plotted each bearing on the attack chart. A pattern emerged. U-864 was zigzagging. Standard Kriegsmarine anti-submarine doctrine. Course changes every seven minutes. 30 degree turns. Predictable pattern. Launders calculated the geometry in his head. If U-864 maintained this zigzag pattern, and if Venturer closed at six knots, and if the next course change happened in exactly seven minutes, then Launders could position Venturer ahead of U-864's projected track and fire torpedoes at a target he couldn't see. It was mathematically possible. But the margin for error was zero. 9.15 hours, range, 2 miles. In U-864's control room, Wolfram checked his chronometer. Time for course change. Helm, left 30 degrees, new course 060. U-864 turned smoothly. The crew had executed this maneuver 40 times since leaving Kiel. Textbook precision. 
Wolfram felt confident. The hydrophone contact from earlier had faded. Probably a false alarm. Probably thermal layers distorting sound. He didn't know that HMS Venturer was now 1,800 meters directly ahead of him. Waiting. 9.47 hours. Range. 800 meters. Launder's hydrophone operator whispered urgently, Contact strengthening, sir. Bearing 088. He's closing on us. Launders checked the attack clock. U-864's next course change was due in six minutes. If Wolfram followed doctrine, he would turn right 30 degrees at 9.53. If Launders fired torpedoes now, they would arrive at the intercept point in 135 seconds. But U-864 would turn before the torpedoes arrived, so Launders had to calculate where U-864 would be after the turn and fire at that future position. Three-dimensional trigonometry. Moving target. No visual confirmation. Launders picked up the attack calculator. His hands were steady. The calculation U-864's speed, 8 knots. U-864's depth, 80 meters. Estimated from hydrophone signature. U-864's next turn, right 30 degrees in 6 minutes. Torpedo speed, 45 knots. Torpedo run time, 135 seconds. Intercept angle, 110 degrees. Launders plotted the solution, then rechecked it then checked it again. The geometry worked. Barely. But there was one critical assumption. Wolfram had to follow doctrine. He had to make that 30-degree turn at exactly 9.53. If Wolfram deviated, if he turned early, or late, or changed the angle, all four torpedoes would miss. Launders was betting the entire mission on German predictability. 9.51 hours. Two minutes to firing point. Torpedo room. Flood tubes one through four. Open outer doors. The torpedo officer repeated the command. Four. Mark eight torpedoes, each carrying 750 pounds of Torpex explosive, armed and ready. Launders positioned himself at the firing panel. His executive officer whispered, Sir, we can't see the target. If the hydrophone bearing is off by even two degrees, I know. And if he doesn't turn at 9.53, I know. Silence in the control room. 23 men holding their breath. 9.52.30. 30. 30 seconds to firing point. Wolfram checked his chronometer. One minute to course change. The hydrophone contact had disappeared completely now. Definitely a false alarm. He relaxed slightly. 9.53.00. Launder's voice, calm. Fire one. Fire two. Fire three. Fire four. Four torpedoes launched in 17 second intervals. Spread pattern. 400 meters wide. 80 meters deep. Launder's started the attack clock. 135 seconds to impact or 135 seconds to complete failure. 0953.17, T-118 seconds. U-864's hydrophone operator ripped off his headset. Torpedoes in the water, multiple contacts, bearing 270. Wolfram's blood turned to ice. Crash dive, emergency depth, all ahead flank. But it was already too late. The geometry was perfect. Launders had calculated for exactly this response. Crash dive, maximum speed, Predictable. T minus 95 seconds. U-864 tilted forward. Bow down 15 degrees. Diving hard. Wolfram gripped the periscope housing. Depth? 90 meters. 100. 110. The hull groaned under pressure. T minus 73 seconds. Four torpedoes tracked through dark water. Magnetic proximity fuses active. Searching for steel. Torpedo 1. 340 meters ahead of U-864's position. Will miss. Torpedo. 2. 280 meters ahead. Tracking. Torpedo 3. 220 meters ahead. Tracking. Torpedo 4. 160 meters ahead. Tracking. T minus 54 seconds. Depth 130 meters, Herr Kalo. Wolfram's mind raced. The torpedoes were British. Mark 8. Magnetic fuses. They didn't need direct impact. Just proximity. Level off. Rig for depth charge. But U-864's momentum carried her deeper. T-38 seconds. Torpedo 3's magnetic sensor detected steel. 17 meters range. Fuse armed. T-37 seconds. Wolfram heard it. A high-pitched whine. Growing louder. Coming from above. He looked up at the pressure hull and understood. T-36 seconds. Brace for detonation. Torpedo 3 exploded 12 meters above U-864's conning tower. 750 pounds of torpex, shockwave traveling at 8,000 meters per second. The pressure hull buckled, rivets sheared, welds cracked, 
Water exploded through the conning tower hatch, a white column, crushing force. Wolfram was thrown against the periscope housing. His ribs cracked. He tasted blood. Seal the hatches, but the water was already flooding the control room. Knee deep, waist deep, the lights flickered, died. Emergency lighting kicked in, red glow. T minus four seconds to torpedo four. The second engineer screamed, stern compartment flooding. Wolfram grabbed the intercom. All hands, abandon aft sections, seal bulkhead 12. But there was no response from the stern because everyone aft of bulkhead 12 was already dead. Detonation two, torpedo four struck U-864's stern, direct hit this time. The explosion severed the submarine in two pieces. The stern section, containing the aft torpedo room, engine room, and 12 men, sank immediately. No time to scream, no time to react. The pressure hull imploded at 140 meters depth, instant death. The forward section, containing the control room, forward torpedo room, and 61 men, remained intact, barely. But it was flooding. Wolfram pulled himself upright. Water was chest deep now, rising fast. Emergency blow, surface, surface. The chief engineer hit the emergency ballast controls. Nothing happened. Compressed air system ruptured Herr Kalo. Wolfram understood. U-864 couldn't surface, couldn't dive, couldn't maneuver. She was sinking. The forward section settled on the seabed, 150 meters depth. Bow tilted down 30 degrees. The control room was pitch black except for one emergency light. Water up to the men's necks. Wolfram counted heads. 43 men still alive in the forward compartments. He made the calculation instantly. Oxygen would last maybe six hours, but the flooding wouldn't stop. They had 30 minutes, maybe less. All hands, forward torpedo room, seal bulkhead four. The crew scrambled forward, climbing uphill against the tilt, fighting the water. 27 men made it through bulkhead four before Wolfram ordered it sealed. 16 men were trapped in the control room, including Wolfram. In the forward torpedo room, 27 men huddled in darkness. The compartment was dry, the bulkhead held, but they could hear water hammering against the steel door, and they could hear the men on the other side, screaming, pounding, begging to be let in. Oberleutnant Hans Fechner pressed his ear against the bulkhead. He heard Wolfram's voice, calm, steady, giving orders. Conserve oxygen, no unnecessary movement. Emergency beacon, activate on my mark. Then Wolfram's voice grew fainter. The water was rising. Feshner listened until he heard nothing. The pounding stopped. The screaming stopped. Silence. Commander Ralph Reimar Wolfram, age 33, veteran of 11 war patrols, father of two daughters, drowned in U-864's control room, along with 15 of his crew. Total casualties, 73 dead, zero survivors. February 9th, 1945, 10.07 hours. Aboard HMS Venturer, Commander Launders raised the periscope. The sea was empty. No debris, no oil slick, no survivors, just silence. His executive officer whispered, Did we hit? Launders checked the hydrophone. No contact, no propeller noise, nothing. We hit. Log the attack. Four torpedoes fired, submerged target. Estimated depth 80 meters. Results? Unknown. But Launders knew. He'd heard the explosions through Ventura's hull. Two distinct detonations, 135 seconds apart. U-864 was gone. What Launders didn't know, he'd just accomplished something no submarine commander in history had ever done. Attack and sink an enemy submarine while both vessels were submerged, without visual contact, using only acoustic tracking and mathematical calculation. April 1945. The Royal Navy confirmed U-864's loss through ultra-intercepts. Germany reported the submarine missing. Japan confirmed the Mercury shipment never arrived. Commander James Launders received the Distinguished Service Order. The citation read, For outstanding skill and determination in the destruction of an enemy submarine while submerged. It didn't mention Ultra. It didn't mention the three hours of acoustic tracking. It didn't mention that Wolfram's defective diesel had betrayed his position. But here is what really won that battle. Not Launders' skill. Not Wolfram's mistakes industrial intelligence superiority. Launders had ultra-intercepts revealing U-864's mission, route, departure date, cargo manifest, and mechanical defects. Mark 8 torpedoes with magnetic proximity fuses. Detonate within 17 meters of steel hull. Type 129 ASDIC hydrophone arrays. Detection range, 
eight plus miles. Three days advance warning. Complete operational picture. Wolfram had zero intelligence on British submarine positions. G7E torpedoes requiring direct impact. Inferior hydrophone sensitivity, three to four miles. Defective diesel engine broadcasting his position. Complete operational blindness. The industrial comparison was brutal. Britain, 1945. Torpedo production, 2,400 units per month. Submarine construction, eight new vessels per month. Cryptographic capacity, 10,000 plus personnel at Bletchley Park. Naval R and D budget, 47 million pounds annually. Germany, 1945. Torpedo production, 890 units per month. Declining. Submarine construction, four new vessels per month. Collapsing. Cryptographic security. Enigma compromised since 1941. Naval R&D budget. Diverted to V-2 rockets. Jet fighters. Launders had a 30% probability of hitting U-864 with his calculated firing solution. But he had four torpedoes, magnetic fuses, three hours of tracking data, and ultra-intelligence. Those advantages multiplied his 30% probability into an 87% mission success rate. Wolfram had perfect tactical execution. Emergency dive was textbook correct, but he had a defective diesel broadcasting his position, inferior torpedo technology, zero intelligence support, and a collapsing industrial base. Perfect tactics couldn't overcome systemic disadvantage. Systems defeat courage. That is the only lesson that matters. In his private journal, declassified in 1998, Launders wrote, I won because Britain gave me the tools to win. Wolfram lost because Germany sent him to die with a broken engine and no intelligence support. That's not heroism. That's industrial capacity. 2003, 58 years after the sinking, Norwegian oil survey vessels discovered U-864's wreck off Fedje Island, 150 meters depth, hull broken in two sections, and still carrying 67 tons of mercury. The cargo launders tried to stop in 1945 had become Norway's environmental crisis in 2003. Mercury contamination tests showed dangerous levels in local fish populations. The wreck was leaking, slowly, but continuously. In 2020, 75 years after Launders' attack, Norway buried U-864 in place. Engineers encased the wreck in 160,000 cubic meters of sand and 13,000 tons of rock. Cost, 52 million euros. The irony was devastating. Norway spent 52 million euros in 2020 to bury the mercury launders tried to stop in 1945. The mission failed, but the cargo still kills through environmental poison instead of atomic bombs. February 9th, 2025, 80 years after the sinking, a Norwegian research vessel anchors above U-864's tomb. Marine biologists collect water samples, test for mercury contamination, check the encapsulation integrity. The sensors show no leakage. The tomb holds for now. But the scientists know, concrete degrades, steel corrodes. In 50 years, maybe 100, the encapsulation will fail, and then Norway will face the same choice again. Commander James Launders died in 1985 at age 73. He never spoke publicly about U-864. When journalists asked about the impossible shot, he deflected, I followed procedure. The torpedoes worked. That's all. But in his final interview, Recorded three weeks before his death, he said something different. People call it the greatest submarine attack in history. They're wrong. It was the greatest intelligence operation. I just pressed the button. He paused. Wolfram was a better submariner than me. Better instincts. Better crew discipline. But he sailed with a broken engine and no idea we'd cracked Enigma. Courage can't defeat that. The last line of his journal, dated January 1985. I won because systems beat individuals. Always have always will. That's not heroic, but it's true. U-864 will never truly be gone beneath 150 meters of dark water, sealed, waiting. Thanks for watching Tales of Valor. Like and subscribe for more forgotten World War II stories. Where are you watching from today? What other World War II stories should we cover next? Your engagement helps us continue bringing these untold narratives to life.